The latest grounded update has added a whole bunch of brand new biomes, including the Fallen Barbecue. So we're gonna take a look at it today, give you my tips and guide, everything you need to know, all the science points, all the molars, everything including the brand new Coltana and how best to defeat some of the new creatures that have been added to this particular biome. Leave a like, check out the rest of my grounded content and let's go. So you can no longer follow one of the paving slabs up onto the new areas. Instead, you're going to have to actually jump over the small little bricks here. The easiest way is to climb up this twig, and long-time players of Grounded will know there's usually a wolf spider, just belief it. Go along the pavement to the wall, and you should be able to see that you're able to jump across onto this little ledge. We walk along the ledge, and you're going to need a splat burst or maybe very good aim with a grenade to get up here a bit quick and easy, but you don't necessarily need it. It just helps a little bit. You can actually go ahead and just climb and jump up on top of this rock. You don't actually need a grenade to access the rest of the area, just like that. But for ease and convenience, if you do go ahead and lob a splat burst at it, it will blow it up and it will just give you a bit more space to climb up a quick and easy route. This may change in the future, this might actually be blocking off the path completely, but otherwise you can always just go ahead and build yourself some platforms up to the flower bed and where the barbecue is anyway. Also, before you go actually climbing up, underneath this leaf, there is actually a milk molar. And you should be able to see it if you're trying to destroy that rock above, so make sure you get this too. So once you're up top, to the left is the barbecue, to the right is more of a safer zone where you'll find one of the science stations that you can go ahead and scan resources and the home to at least two roly-poly spawns and possibly even a scarab. So we'll come to that lot at the end. Let's go and check out the newer, newer, funky stuff. So the paving slabs here offer a good respite before you venture into the sizzling areas. A few things to consider before going into this area is making sure you've got the antlion armor sets or Quisilda antlion meal, as this will both give you protection against the sizzle. The sizzle works a bit differently than it does in the sandbox, it's actually much more dangerous the closer you get to charcoal, so you may need one of these to help you. But there is another solution. I'm purposely not wearing any of the antlion armor just to show you the kind of damage that can happen if you venture into this place with not the correct stuff. But there is something that helps with that. There is a hot pool and this replenishes your health. It gives you a two minute buff and you don't have to stay in the water. Once you've gone into it once, that buff will be applied and you'll have two minutes of extra slowly health regeneration. You can see it in the new revamp status section, just on the bottom it should be here and you can see it's got a two minute duration. The sizzling also does mean that you need to have more water on you or be prepared to get some as you're going to sweat more and need more water quicker. So it's not too bad a spot to fight some of the ladybug larvae which also do do the sizzling damage buff to you as well. It's not as substantial as some of the others but if they do manage to get a few hits on you it will increase your sizzling. So if you run into any of these guys, make sure you head to the pool to get that two minute extra buff or get out of the barbecue areas close to the charcoal so you can fight without the double sizzling effect. So if you actually get used to where that pool water is, you can pretty much run and go and grab some of the charcoal pieces, which you're going to need a big amount of if you want to actually craft a new Coltana sword. And then simply run back to the pool and that will give you that little health boost and you should be okay. As you might expect, the antlion armor means the sizzle goes up a lot slower, but as always, if you do get too close to the burning parts here of the charcoal, it will go up quickly, even still. So get in and get out, and you should be okay. You more than likely will need the full antlion suit on, or making sure you've got plenty of the Quisilda antlion stuff, and maybe some mints to help reduce the damage from the sizzle, if you want to get hold of a gold molar that's inside the actual grill bowl. As always, make sure you've brought your tier 2 hammer and make sure you've got a tier 2 shovel too. That's because there's multiple spots just like in the sandbox where you can dig up pieces of food as well as loot boxes. Next up is the other golden molder that you want to get hold of and this is right underneath the other part of the grill. There are two wolf spiders that sleep just below but if you're pretty careful you should maybe be able to do this without alerting them, especially if it's pretty early in the morning. You can also grab the science points which can be worth a good 500 too. So I made light a little bit of the larvae bugs. They're definitely challenging for sure, but if you do have any kind of salt equipped weapon, or in this case, the salt mace, you're really gonna be able to do a lot more damage with them. And they're definitely not as scary as they were when they first got added to the PTB. Resource wise, you are only gonna get the same resources that you get by killing normal larvae, although I'm hoping that you get a bit more goop sometimes. Another way up onto the upper areas is to jump on top of the fallen down grill and you can actually move around the outside edges of it to get up there too. 
Once you're up there, you should find a bag of charcoal, and there is a quick and easy way to get inside. You don't actually have to climb on top of it. If you go to the far side, closest to the actual shed area, you should find a small hole underneath and give you quick and easy access. You can then climb the pebbles to get on top of the bag to give yourself a bit of a view and surroundings, and maybe spot some scarabs. And while you're up there, you should be able to jump on top of one of the lights and pick up another 500 science points. Inside the bag at the moment, it's relatively safe. You'll find a normal milk molar that you can go and grab and maybe sometimes some lava bug spawns. But it's pretty feasible that you can get up here without pretty much needing any of the antlion armor or having to worry about any creatures. Just make sure you've got some fast, speedy armor or high stamina and you should be able to run in and out of here with not too many issues. And then you simply just need to go and pick up the Coltana sword. So they've changed this once before it was you had to destroy a piece of charcoal to gain access to the recipe. But now the sword is sticking out in a bit of an unusual way with the handle embedded in the stone. And then it disappears when you pick it up. Once you've done faffing about taking some cool pictures, the sword will eventually disappear. There is some sizzling debuff that happens here from this one piece of charcoal, but it's not a massive amount. Given it's a tier 3 item, it's pretty easy to get the materials needed. You only need 5 of the charcoal pieces, 10 bug loop and 2 spicy globs. It has no real stun capabilities but does do 4.5 damage, but hasn't got the best durability. It is of course a spicy weapon as well. It really shouldn't take you too long to go and get the charcoal pieces, although it does look like they may have removed some of the pieces that were originally along the flower bed wall where the old barbecue place was. I'll be taking a look at the trenches and this zone where the Black Ox Beetle can be found in a separate video. But if you do go all the way to the leg of the barbecue and climb on top, you should eventually be able to make your way up to another 500 science points. I guess lastly, it is worth noting that scarabs can sometimes walk around this areas as well. And obviously you do still get a lot more ladybug larvae too. And finishing off, taking a look at the rest of the flower beds to the east and west. If you go along to the east side of it, Keeping the garden wall to the left-hand side and going up this pathway, you should eventually come to some leaves on the left-hand side. And inside here, there is going to be a small amount of science points. I do predict that this area probably will change in the future. They maybe add some more components, as there are some secrets that we're going to discuss in a second. Here's the location exactly on the map. And just to highlight that there is only way to really get up here unless you're going to bring some building components and that is where the actual barbecue has fallen over. Otherwise be prepared to bring some ladders if you want another route. If you keep following the same direction and eventually you will get to the science station but be warned there are some of the brand new ladybug larvae spawns here. Now these can be pretty challenging and tough. Do not use any spicy tools or weapons against these as they're almost immune. They will take a bit of damage but for sure salty all the way and you'll be amazed how quickly you start defeating these guys. At the moment there's no health bandages in this field station but you will find of course an analyzer and one of the resource scanners like normal. When you exit the field station if you actually take a look at the wall you should be able to see 500 juicy science points on it. Again you're going to have to bring some building resources with you to grab this or drop onto it from the flower bed above. A quick well positioned clover ramp should do the trick. Now I kept going alongside this little ledge just to see what else there was towards the end of the flower bed that overlooks the pond and underneath these leaves there is a strange skeleton. Again it seems like this might be something they'll add some sort of weapon or feature in the future but take a look. If they do add a new recipe or new item or tool here I will of course update this video. But if you like easter eggs this is the exact location of it. Nearby you should find one of the roly poly spawns and they're not as tough as you would think. They've been changed a little bit as they went through the PTB update. So let's take a look at how hard they are now with a few different weapons. Firstly, the Coltana. Three full hits of the Coltana and you're taking away nearly two and a half of its actual health. Another combo attack and you pretty much reduce it to half health already. And just to show you the other spawn of it, which is a bit more closer to the upturned barbecue, using the black ox hammer, it's pretty much the same thing. A good two series of attacks will reduce it down to half health, and then obviously you've got to wait on it as always when it's regaining itself. This area especially is pretty good for taking these guys on. Apart from maybe the odd ladybug larvae, it's a pretty safe spot to take them on and have no one else really attacking you. And of course, the roly polies are the only way that you actually get the roly poly shells. You only get roly poly parts when you kill the sickly versions. 
and a bit old, but this flower bed does offer the chance to jump on top of the etch sketcher and pick up the Frankenlion scab. It's pretty old, but I figure since it's relevant to this area. Other notable resources, you will find some fawns to get for your arrows, as well as the usual dandelions, fluffs, and obviously lots of grass. The big mystery is this boulder. It seems to be hiding a series of tunnels underneath, so expect some sort of big thing to be going here in the future. But effectively, this is a safe zone where you can build mostly happily and only have to worry about a few attacks from larvae. To the west hand side of the barbecue spill, there's absolutely zilch going on here. Maybe some water, maybe a, a decent place to set up a base, although I wouldn't get too cosy here. It does again look like they're going to develop this into much more. I guess at this point, unless they really are going to leave it empty, the grounded devs probably need to have some sort of marker popping up like a 3D one saying that this place could potentially become big changes in the future. Arc Survival of Old have done this over the years and left markers. We've obviously got the markers that warn you this place is under construction, but yeah, it seems a little bit too empty to be just left alone, unless they really do plan to just leave it as a grass area. And there we go, that's my ultimate guide to the barbecue zone. Everything you can craft, all the resources you can get, as well as obviously all the loot and the enemies that you'll encounter. If you think I should have included something vital, do let me know. And if there's any big changes between now and the full update going live, I'll do another video. Until next time, right, guys, go and check out the rest of my grounded content, and I'll see you later.